Akia and Aquas. Um, this is your brother Kalab giving all glory, honor, and praises once again to Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Wamalaki Haushai. Um, Shalaki. And today I'm doing the cut on um, basically brotherly family love, man. Because some of the things that I go on YouTube, you know, I know everybody will look on YouTube, but the things that come down my feed, man. You got this beef, you got that beef, you got this sister want to rap battle this sister. Women rap battle now, you know. They actually say some real rude things to sisters, but at the end of the day, don't understand why cops killing us. Don't understand why people don't respect us as a people. You feel me? They People do not understand the value in respecting and honoring your brother. You will never, ever catch a white man calling another white man a cracker. But they all some crackers. They all some damn crackers, right? But they, and they are, they are. But they don't call each other that. Why? Because they actually respect each other. They actually will stand up and defend each other in front of you. If you call one of them a cracker, it's going to be a gang of white people on your ass. You, you will never see another Chinese man calling another Chinese man a yellow skinned bastard. You will never see an African man calling another African man dusty or nappy headed. If they don't eat, they could hate each other. They could be from two different African nations. They gonna just go their separate ways. They not gonna call each other out their name and get all up in arms about something, right? So we gonna get it in Deuteronomy. We gonna see why we doing this, right? Because Deuteronomy 28 and 15 tells you, it, it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee so because you celebrate things like Christmas you don't keep the Sabbath day you don't know your heritage your nationality you don't really see the value in yourself you don't really see who you are according to the Bible and according to God you think you just a nigga you think your brother is just another nigga that smoke weed or do drugs or drink a lot or like fucking women Excuse my language, but that's really what it is Right, you don't look at your sister as nothing more than a hoe or a slut Or something to be pimped out You don't look at your sister as a queen But that's actually exactly what she is according to God She's a daughter of Zion According to the scriptures That means she's a daughter of the most high God That means God looks at her as one of his princesses The Bible even tells you Thou shalt not make a whore out of the daughter of thy people so we gonna get it on um, this is verse 54 in the same chapter so the man that is tender among you and very delicate his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave so that he will not give any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness wherein thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates so right now is going into how a man is gonna leave his children because he don't see the value in his kids. A black man, a Latino man, a Native American man don't see these as, th these ain't no children of God. These just some more niggas that I'd have had. These little niggas, they'll be all right. Section A to take care of them, right? It's also going in how a man don't care about his brother. We used to be tender and delicate to one another. Shalom, brother, how you doing? You all right? You need anything? You good? We are not like that no more. We straight to the point. Look, brother, fuck you, right? Let's scrap, square up. This a bitch ass, this and bitch ass nigga, and that's not, that's not according to the laws of the Most High God. That is off. That's off. That's out of order to be that type of person, especially to your own people, right? It says his eye shall be evil toward his brother. You see a brother that's doing better than you, you automatically look down on that man. You don't see the God in that man. You don't see the King in that man. You don't see the Prince in that man. And this is a so this is your brother. This is so-called black man or Hispanic man or Native American man. You do not see the king in that man. But you see the king in Donald Trump. You can hate Donald Trump, but you respect his name. Well, our president, you don't call him a bitch ass anything. That's your president. That's and if it ain't your president, it's the president. Bruh, with the Secret Service and Look, man, you 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 will never call Peyton Manning a bitch. You will never call, why is that? Because you look at these men as actually men. You look at these men as kings, et cetera, et cetera. You don't look at your own people as kings. That's a problem. That's a curse, right? 
and toward his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. These just hoes, sluts, and whores. They strippers, they thoughts, right? That's what we think of our women. But our women, if you don't know, everybody fashions, they, they fashion after our women. Whether they got on long dresses, our women started that. Whether they got on head wraps and head scarves, whether it's from Muslim culture or in the Middle East or it's in Africa, our women started that. Our women started the earrings, the jewelry, the nose piercings. Our women is the flyest women. But we don't think of our women as nothing. But meanwhile, everybody want curly hair. Everybody want black hair. Everybody want dark hair. Knowing that they don't have that. They don't have curly anything, but everybody want it because our women is the finest women on the face of the earth. We just don't treat our women like that, and they don't treat each other that way, right? And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Well, that's self-explanatory. His eyes evil toward his children. He don't care. He don't. How many fatherless homes do we have, right? That's self-explanatory. Now we're gonna jump to verse fifty-six. The tender and delicate woman among you, right? Let's see what she going to turn into, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. This is these is this is how, you know, we had queens and princesses, right? These women, they we didn't even used to let their feet touch the ground. Look, what? I'm about to carry you down there. <laughs> you had a gang. Of, look, brother, can y'all you got men. You, you let's say you had servants more than likely you probably had servants carrying your woman somewhere just so she didn't have to walk that's how tender and delicate we seen our women as we didn't even want them to have to use their strength to walk it was like flowers they was like little flowers right just all dressed up and dolled up and dresses and gold on and that, where is that at? That's nowhere. You got all of our women with fake ass weave on looking like ratchet ass white women, right? And the white women don't even want to look like white women. That's how that's how you know we're destroyed as a people. When the people you're you're trying to um impersonate don't even want to look like they self. They want to look like you, but you want to look like them and they're in power. They're in power. They run everything. Why would if I was in power, why would I want to look like somebody that I'm that is my slave? Basically, why would I want to look like my slave? Because my slave will have to be damn beautiful. My slave will have to something will have to be going on with the slave for me to be envious or jealous of how my slave look. But that's actually what's going on because they know that we we look better than them. We act better than them. Right? We have more strength than them. We have more spirituality than them. It's something about us that everybody wants. We just don't see it because we're lost. We're destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom. So not only is the husband, he don't give a damn about this woman, but this woman don't give a damn about him. It's both ways, right? And toward her son. So these women literally pollute the minds of their son. That's why you got emotional black, Hispanic, and Native American men raised in single parent homes and the single parent that's there raising them is their mother their mother is not trying to make them into a man their mother just wants them to really do whatever she say be effeminate most moms don't care if their son is a homosexual in the black community they don't care that's still my son that's what they'll tell you oh i love him that's okay no he's not a man he's not here doing what he's meant to be doing that's being that's your eye being evil towards your son. Why would you want a homosexual son when he's meant to, he's made for a purpose? He's meant to do something and he cannot do that in this current condition that he's in. So and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward all her children which she shall bear. So look, man. This this is this is serious these are serious curses you see one you see woman on black woman on black woman crime latino woman on black woman black on latino latino on latino native american women on you see all of these things happening in our nation and our communities this sister got a problem with this sister and they broadcast it everywhere when Nicki minaj one one example and I, this is just from me being on youtube right just from me looking on youtube and seeing things one of the most prominent rap battles or beefs between our women our our sisters would be Nicki minaj and cardi b or Nicki minaj and remy ma all of these women remy ma in prison that's she's she tough now because she went to prison how about you raise your damn kids how about you do that 
be a good woman that way. You think going to prison make you a tough, a tough bitch? No, it don't. It make you a stupid bitch. That's what it make you. You done lost all these years of your life and you leading off other women to think, oh, it's cool to act like a nigga, to act like a man, but really not even a man, a nigga, because what man want to be in prison? What man want to be away from their family? So now you got women that want to be niggas and niggas that want to be women, right? That's all out of order and nobody's being what they meant to be. So now the best people on earth is turned upside down and inside out. And this is just for me being on YouTube and seeing this, you know, you got what you got the soldier boy and Drake, what you got the Pusha T and Drake. These is all, these is brothers. You got LeBron talking down about this man and what is going on? All y'all got so much money. Y'all could be pouring into things. You got Joe Budden beefing with the game. You got this and that. These is our men. These is our, these is all supposed to be our elders, but they're niggas. They're not doing anything, and most people look up to these men. And then you got the whole young generation, right? And this is not to dog my brothers or my elders, but this is just to simply show my people their transgressions and show my people that we're better than this. We shouldn't be doing this to each other, right? So these is the curses, right? This is, I'm going to just be going through the spirit, but I want to go and show you how we actually supposed to be treating each other, right? So, right? Well, actually, I want to um, I want to get two more scriptures on that. So I'm gonna get um, Second Corinthians eleven and twenty six. All right, and it says, "In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen." Right. So our own countrymen. Look, I'm gonna jump up. This is uh this is Paul speaking in Corinthians, right? He said, um, let me jump up to verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day have I I have been in the deep, and journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen. So these things was done by his own countrymen, his own people, by Yasharala. We did this to Paul in past lifetimes. So these things are actual, like, these are things we go through on a daily basis now. And we ask ourselves, well, why do this brother hate me? I only been good to this brother because nobody followed the law. It told you that in Deuteronomy 28 and 15. If you don't keep the law, I don't care what type of spirit you got. You are subject to these curses. You are subject to be cursed in these specific ways. All right, so um, I'm going to get further into it. Um, lower this brightness. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, man. Um, so I also want to get um, Titus 3 and 3. This is lock here. <laughs> Titus 3 and I believe it was 3 and 3. Um, yeah, it is. So it says, um, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another okay so we do that we we are the people who are the most passionate we tend to do that to one another we tend to be the people who oh i hate my brother because he said this because truth be told we grow up in single parent homes so it's a lot of backbiting it's a lot of things that brothers go through it's a lot of folly it's a lot of madness that we speak out of our own mouths and the, the biggest problem is we don't know how to forgive one another we don't know how to let things go it's a law that says you shouldn't let the sun go down on your wrath so before the sunset go down you're supposed to forgive your brother if your brother the next day come to you and y'all he was just backbiting and you forgive him right he, he's supposed to come to you tomorrow and let's say he don't got no food bro i don't got no food he was just backbiting but you forgave him for that he allowed you to forgive that y'all done made up y'all good by the next 
the next five hours y'all should be good from that because y'all brothers now he come to ask you for some food you should give him a three course meal if you can or however much you can afford to give him that's how we supposed to be set up not with hatred but anywhere you go you see these curses played out you see us hating each other you see and this is this is not milk right now this is just substance this is just me speaking through the spirit of the most high to my people and showing us our transgressions because this is a main thing that happens in so-called african-american so-called latino so-called native american um areas where we're at where we live at communities that's the word i was looking for in our communities these is the this is the main stimulant of the problems that we go through rather than i mean it's beneath the curses as a whole but the main curse that we go through is this curse if we could if we could learn to let this curse go a lot of other curses will automatically fall away because they're really predicated off of hating ourselves and hating our our family hating our brothers right so now I want to get some of the um I want to get some of the things we can do um to um kind of apply a certain medicine to this to this sickness that we have. So this is some of the things we can do as men, as women, just as a nation that will kind of qualm these problems that we have, right? So um I'm going to get I'm going to get James 1 and 19, and then I'm going to get uh, Sirach, alright, but first we're going to get James, James is, is one of my favorite books, I say that sometimes, I don't know, I won't say a lot, but it said, 1 and 19 says, wherefore my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, verse 20, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, okay, so, I'm going to break this down. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. So if a man angry, let's say y'all just got into an argument or something, or you and your wife, or you and your, your child, right? Even though children need to listen to their parents, sometimes a child is off. So you have, in our nation, we have to hear each other out, right? It says, um, let every man be swift to hear. Because you, we all have a certain dispensation of knowledge, especially dealing with this truth. So in order for that knowledge to actually resonate and come out, you have to actually understand what's coming at you. You cannot be swift to anger. You have to be swift to hear what's going on around you. So if your brother is having a problem with you, you have to say, okay, let me see where this brother coming from. Because I'm don't. i not going to hate this brother for real. I might even get angry at this brother and don't really want to talk to him for years. That's never going to result in me wanting to kill this man because I actually have love for this man. That's what we got to keep in our mind, right? So you're supposed to be swift to hear. Then what? Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, because that's a part of being. If you're fast to hear, you're slow to actually say something because you're actually trying to understand what's going on. This is a law, right? Because we need these laws. The most, that's why the most high put it here right slow to wrath so i shouldn't hear something and just get mad it's a reason why you feel that way it's a reason why you're saying that because you're dealing with a certain sickness now if i can treat your sickness you will stop dealing and thinking that way then that'll solve the whole problem we have most of the time all right for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of god because for me to get angry quick for me to get angry about something quick, I have no understanding. And that's if you don't have no understanding, you're not dealing with the laws of God. So it's not you're not dealing with God. You don't know God in that moment. God don't understand. God understands what's going on, but he's not with what you're doing in that moment. So you can't say this is something God said you can you could never God will never agree with you, in other words. So you're off. So you could be a, the reason why you're off. So all these beefs that people having, that's only only us is beef. Donald Trump is not beefing with Russia. You see what I'm saying? We, we're beefing in the hood. We don't have nothing but a Glock and 10 bullets and maybe some, some weed on the table. And we want to kill each other. But nobody want to kill this white man. Right? That's off. That's off. So look. I'm going to get another one. It was in Ciroc. Um, Sirach 9 to 18, Ecclesiasticus 9 to 18, all right, in the Apocrypha.
and it says a man of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated so look a man of an ill tongue you got a uh, you just look you backbite and you talking mad crazy right and you talking mad crazy about somebody it's dangerous in his city you a danger to your city you actually not I don't I've been I've been guilty of this before right I'm not gonna lie brothers do crazy things so I've been guilty of saying things about brothers because sometimes I don't understand I may be confiding in the wrong person I may be in the scripture speak about that prove a friend sometimes you do need to just let things off your chest and you may know man I don't really want to say this to this person because it's not gonna really lead to nothing it's just something that I'm dealing with. So you may want to say something to a friend, but you got to know what friend you telling. You got to know, can you really confide in this friend? Because if you, if this is really, if this is really a friend that's not just your friend, this friend can spill your feelings out to anybody. Now you sitting somewhere looking dumb and it's not nobody's fault, but you, I've been guilty of that. It's my fault. It would be my fault to tell one of my friends that's not just my friend or not just looking out for me. And that don't mean that this friend, that don't mean, in other words, if I got a black, Latino, or Native American friend, that they should just be just my friend. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, sometimes you have a certain friend that it can you can actually confide in them. They will never, ever let something that you say to them in private leave their lips because they actually understand you enough to understand you just trying to get understanding on this and you don't really want no problems. You just frustrated, you upset, you going through this and that. But nevertheless, I've been guilty of what it said, right? A man of ill tongue is dangerous in his city, and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated. So people will actually hate you because you speak, you, when you speak, you have no understanding. You just talking fast, right? You don't know how to calm down. You don't know how to intake and listen to what the next man saying. Because what you saying is not more valuable than what the next man saying. The only thing that's more valuable as a word is the word of God. The word of God is what's going to bring y'all back together as a family. So really what I feel is no more different. It's no, uh, it's not higher up than what the next man feel. What the Lord feel is higher up than what me or this man feel. Okay. That's, that's the basis of what's going on. So, um, I'm a Sirach, Sirach 9, 19 and 6. It's a lot in Sirach, okay? Sirach 19 and 6. It says, He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. All right? So, and look, it even goes farther. So, this, this is what I mean by having a friend that you can confide in, right? Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee, and thou shalt fare never the worse. Whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives, and if thou canst without offense, reveal them not. So, in other words, if, some, if a brother come to me mad as hell at another brother, I, I'm actually, I'm going to listen to you, bro. I'm going to listen to what you got to say. Now, I'm not going to go back and tell this man. Oh, well, brother said this about you. And I'm not going back because that wasn't the point. If he wanted to say that to you, he would have said that to you. So why did he come to me? He just needed somebody to talk to. And you was not going to be that person because y'all would have ended up fighting, shooting, gang banging at each other. Something that is just out of control and out of order and off. And that's, it would be better for him to confide in me or confide in the scriptures and he choose me so i'm i should be a man of the scriptures that he can confide in right i'm gonna hold it down in other words and when he tell me not only am i not gonna tell you it's never gonna get back to you unless he goes directly to you because i'm not going around telling people well this this why he feel that way well why he feel this way well i he told me this and this what i that's off that's off right that's how you start violence that's how you start bad things in the community because people, it's just a fem we just we raised in a feminine environment. That's the best way I can put it. So even even me, I was raised by a single mother. So sometimes the tendencies we have, me speaking about me too, the tendencies we have, we have to get rid of them because they don't do nothing but weaken us as men and weaken our nation. We supposed to get stronger together. I'm supposed to trust every black man I run into right and this is these are some of the this is the medicine for that all right so next we're gonna go to 
Sirach 19 and 6. Okay. And it says, well, I'm going to get 19 and um, Salakia. I'm going to get 19 and 18. Well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually start at, I'm going to start at 13. Con. Admonish a friend, it may be, he hath not done it, and if he have done it, that he do it no more. Admonish thy friend, it may be, he hath not said it, and if he have, that he speak it not again. Admonish a friend for many times it is a slander and believe not every tale. So in other words, if if your it, you gotta in other words confront your confront the enemies of your people. If your people if you heard something and it's really irking you enough to say something, the best thing to do is to go directly to that brother and say, Look, bro, I heard you said this, this, and that. Why do you feel this way? You, so you this is your brother. You don't have to fight this man. You do not have to square up with this man. Matter of fact, it's out of order to square up with this man. You're not supposed to harbor wrath. Now, if it come down to it, if the man want to swing on you or something, then catch the wands. You from you catch the wands with this man. But it shouldn't be no. You shouldn't be. You should admonish your brother. In other words, correct. In other words, if your brother, if you feel like your brother, which is the man of your people, is off, and you really feel a ways enough to say something out your mouth, you should just go directly to that brother and say, "Bro, I feel like you off. I feel like you wrong." And you might don't even gotta say it that hard. You could just say, "Bro, I heard you said this. I don't agree with that. Why do you? You supposed to." have a, a dialogue with this man you're supposed to break things down and why you feel the way you feel because y'all a family we're a family right there is one that slippeth in his speech but not from his heart and who is he that have not offended with his tongue so like i'm saying i'm even guilty of that who have not offended with their tongue who have not said some the lord said if you be without sin cast the first song who who has who has ever went in their life perfectly without offending one of their brothers? You didn't. You definitely said something that had your brother hot. That had a man in your nation hot. Is what I'm saying. You as a black Latino or Native American man have said something that have offended a black and Latino or Native American man. There's not one of us that have not did it because we rash with our mouth. Even back then, even right here in the scripture, while as they was writing this, men in our nation was doing the same thing. It's never changed. We the same people. So it's telling you, what did you say? It said, there is there is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. Look, man, I might I might jump out my mouth, jump out my skin, and call my brother out his name. I might slip in my speech, right? But that don't mean I hate my brother. That don't mean I want to see this man dead. That don't mean that don't mean I want to see this man family crying and or him locked up or I'm a snitch on. No, it's not none of that. You feel me? It's just I'm mad right now and I'm emotional. But we not supposed to. We supposed to be men. This is how you become a man. This is the some of the steps. To, this is the medicine. You see what I'm saying? This is medicine from the Most High through His Son Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Wamalaki Yahweh Shai through the Holy Spirit, right? Admonish thy neighbor before thy threaten him, before thou threaten him, and not being angry, give give place to the law of the Most High, because the law is love. And it goes on to tell you that the fear of the Lord is the first step to be ex to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. Okay, wisdom is how you get love from your brother. Well, bro, you know what? Even if even if we disagree, you will get this. Well, you know what, bro? I'm just I'm just gonna agree to disagree with you, bro. But it's all love, cause it's all love. The brother the brother may not never come to the truth, but if you show him wisdom in the way you deal with your people, they gonna always have love for you. Who gonna hate a man that's dealing with, with wisdom? You can't. You can only disagree. That's all that's left for you to do. It's not left up for you to hate this man. It's not left up to you to. Now, do this mean? I can't uh, call a white man a bitch. No, they are bitches. They are the devil, right? But my people, I will never let that come out of my mouth. And if it do, I'm slipping out of tongue. 
I'm not slipping to the heart, brother. I love you. I want to see your family thrive and, and be in the most successful state they could be in. I want y'all to have the best of everything. Okay? But these white devils, demons, these Korean, Asians, these Africans, these damn Arabs, they can all burn to hell. They can all go to hell because they're not my people. They will get called out their name. They will get talked down to. They not my people. We've been here for 400 years and counting. And ain't nobody came over here to help us yet. Me or my people. So they, that's what it is for them. I don't have no respect to them. But I have all respect for my people. And all respect for my father in heaven. Right? So we're going to get more about brotherly love, man. How you supposed to be to one another. How it's really supposed to be. We're going to go to Romans, man. 12 and 10. Romans 12 and 10. And, um... Because these... We talk about the white man. We talk about, you know... Um... This theory we talk about is the Lord one person, three persons. What is love? You know, what is the law? And well, sometimes we got to come from the milk and just understand why we actually do this. And you know, what this is, what is this is supposed to be applied and what it's supposed to look like when you apply these laws, right? So, uh, Romans 12 and 10 it says, Be kindly affectionate, affect, affectioned, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another so not only should i be affection with my brother not you know affection i should love my brother right but i should prefer my brother what do it mean to prefer it's that's the root word is preference or a similar a similar word would be preference if i have a preference of if i if i prefer blue over red are they on the same level no, I like that means I like blue more than red. So I should prefer my brothers more than any other people on this earth. So if if I today if I get in an argument with my brother, that means that any other nation should be afraid of me because they can catch ultimate hell at the end of the day. Because if I don't even if I can get in an argument with my brother, I could I could damn near walk outside and kill a hundred white men right now. If I could, if I can, if a thought can enter my mind to get into, to get into an argument or a fight with my brother, I should be able to walk outside and slaughter white women, children, and men, right? That's how much more I'm supposed to prefer my brother to everybody else on the face of the earth. For they are nothing. That's what the Lord said. They are less than, they are less than nothing. They are spittle. How do you be less than nothing? So I'm a, I'm a prefer that to my brother? Hell no. Hell no. Right, First Thessalonians 4 and 9. Sometimes we, we forget what the application of these scriptures is supposed to look like when it comes out. Okay, we're not supposed to, I'm never supposed to um, apply the scripture, but nothing changes. I'm still getting the arguments with my people. I'm still talking down on my people. It's okay to admonish my brother. It's okay to admonish my sister, but I'm also supposed to show them love. All right. So First Thessalonians four and nine, um, it says, Salakia. I'm still in Colossians uh, four and nine. It says, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Right. So how are we taught of God to love one another? What did God tell us to do in order to love one another? This is 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So you should be a commandment keeper. In other words, your brother, one of the commandments is to give alms. If your brother is down, your brother don't got something, your brother should never feel like, oh, this is my brother, but I don't know. I know he get money, but I don't know if I should ask him because he going to look at me like a broke nigga. And no, your brother is has to give you some money. If you down, you really need something, you really str struggling or suffering, your brother's supposed to give you that. You can't just use your brother up, but I'm saying, if this is really your, supposed to be your brother, your brother, you, you, you gonna feel a ways if your brother, if you ask your brother something? No, you supposed to ask your brother for something. You supposed to prefer your brother. You supposed to prefer your brother rather than going to a bank and getting a loan from a damn bank. Your brother should be the bank to you. You should be the bank to your brother. That makes sense. 
And this is your people. If you can't deal with your people, why deal at all? Right? And let's get it, man. I'm going to get a few more and then I'm going to let it go. Cause it, I, I just it just caught my spirit. I was just on YouTube and I'm just well, I'm just going. It's video after video. I'm like, damn, bro. Every video is this brother beefing with this brother. This brother talking about this brother. This she's talking about this woman on a hoe and this a thought. It's out of order. It's out of control. We should not be dealing with each other like this. This is out of control. And this mainly the fault of the pastors because according to the pastors, you don't have to do nothing but come and pay your tithes and offering, come to church every Sunday, and it, that's all. You don't have to follow no laws. Not understanding, there are moral laws. Not understanding, one of the moral laws is thou can't murder. Thou should not steal. Thou should not kill. Thou should not hate the bro your brother. You should not bear a grudge against your brother. So if I don't have to follow the law, that means I can bear all the grudges I want. That means I can hate all the people I want of my own people. That means I can kill my brother and still go to heaven. Not so. That's one of the main problems with Christianity is they don't care about the laws. That is the problem with the church. They do not save lives. And they just lie. They just lie and they really condemn themselves at the end of the day. But it's up to men like me who understand certain scriptures and understand how we supposed to be that we can come together through these scriptures. All right. So. Um, first John three and 17, first John three and 10. I'm just. We just going to we might damn near just read the first the, the chapter of first John, man, because first John and three, man. <laughs> Look, this this is a great chapter. First John, um, yeah, we just gonna read until it get until it gets good enough. All right, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. So they don't understand love. They don't understand how. I could be this poor, a brother could be that rich, but he got so much respect for me and I got so much respect for him and I can ask him anything and he can ask me anything and I can confide in him, he can confide in me and I will never spill his secrets, you can never pay me enough to, to spill this brother's secrets, he could be worth 10 billion dollars and I'm worth 20, but I will never spill this man's secrets for 100,000, 200, 300, a million, a billion, cause this is my brother. The world be like, what the hell is, nigga, you broke as hell. Like, why would you not take, anybody would take this hundred thousand. Not so, because I understand God loved me and he loved this man. And we are sons of the most high of living God. So I will never sell out my brother. I will never rat on my brother. I will never do that. That is what this is saying right here. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure right you purify yourself because you know look i want to see christ because that's really my big brother that's big big brother so i want to see him really you, you understand like you that's how you're supposed to be thinking you're supposed to be thinking like man this is gonna make me pure enough. Me loving my brother is gonna make is gonna allow me to actually when Christ comes back, I'm not gonna think, oh damn, that's an alien. Oh damn, what the hell is going on? Oh damn, it's UFOs. No, I'ma understand, damn. These are actually our people. That's what love is gonna do to you. It's gonna actually let you understand how great you are in conjunction with the Father and the Son. And it's gonna let you see the Son for what he is, right? Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the, the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. That's that's ultimate love right there, right? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither hath known him, right? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of evil. Okay, so this is more so going into a man who just off. A man who just, you telling the brother, look, bro, love your brothers, you know, keep the Sabbath. Man, like, man, F the Sabbath. Man, F my brother. 
well, look, you are your father the devil. You tweak and you tripping. And this was more so talking about the Pharisees and how they used to do that. They would actually act like, you know, they love God and they, oh, I'm so high and mighty. Look, my fringe is down to the floor. But they really wasn't, they was taxing their people. They wasn't caring about their people. They was down. They was really one of the biggest foots stepping on their people's necks at the end of the day. That's of your father the devil, right? The devil being actually, you know, Rome, Greece, Esau, Edom, who's just the sons of the devil or the devil on the earth, right? In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. So, yes, the same way God has children, the devil has children, which will be Esau and the other nations, right? Chiefly Esau, chiefly Edom, right? So, Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So, if you don't do the commandments, like, what what do it say? I'm going to get it. Shalakia. It's 1 John 2 and 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So, if you're not keeping the commandments, you're actually a liar. And you actually have no truth in you. And you actually don't know God, right? But it's more because it's telling you in chapter 3, verse um, 10, uh, Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So if you keep in the commandments, let's say, let's say you let's say you love your brother, right? You anytime your brother asks you for something, yeah, bro, I got you on that dime sack. Yeah, bro, I, I kick on this bottle. Did the Lord say kick on that bottle? Did the Lord say brother, buy your brother a dime sack? Did the Lord say, but no, the Lord didn't say do that. So you do, you, you think you love your brother, but you don't know God. So really you don't love your brother. And then it's telling you, let's say you keep the commandments. You know not to buy dime sacks. Oh brother, we can't be dime, buying dime sacks. Now your brother ain't really smoking no more. Your brother come to you, bro, I'm hungry as hell, bro. I done paid these bills, my child support and da da da. I ain't ate in a day, bro. You think you could buy me a burger or something? And you like, bro, hell no. Nah. You better get another job. Ain't nothing wrong with having two jobs. You can Now you telling the brother what he can and can't do. Feed your brother. So you keeping the commandments. You keep the Sabbath day, but you hate your brother. So you, you also is not a man of righteousness. You will be cast down into hell at the end of the day, too. You're going to burn in the lake of fire, too. Because the Lord ain't dealing with you, either. The Lord don't know you, either. Right? And this is why, for this is the message that she heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So this is what the commandments is for, to teach you how to love one another. All right. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one who and slew his brother and wherefore he slew him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. OK, so I could go on and on with this chapter, man. It's, it's a good chapter to read. First John, first John, second John, third John, James. All right, Rev the whole Bible, man. It's a great book, but but this 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 chapter right here is letting you know about brotherly love. This video is about brotherly love, sisterly love, national love, loving our children, our grandparents, what it means, our mothers, our fathers, knowing knowing how to be a man, how to be a woman, how to stay in love with one another, how to deal with one another. It shouldn't be no backbiting. It's we. It's, that's dead. That's old, man. Cash your old man away. It's we get. It's too late in the game for stuff like that. All right. If you need something, ask your brothers. If you need something, it should be no problem to ask your brothers before you ask the white man. It should be no problem to give to your brothers. It should be no problem to give to your sisters. These is your people. Who else do you care for? What is life for other than to be with your people, other than to be with your your uh your spouse, other than to be with your children? Show love to your people, man. So this is me giving all praises, glory, and honor to the Father Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Mamalak Yahweh Shai, bidding Yasharala a hearty shalom, and telling y'all to stay strong, man, and just lean on one another in these last days, man. Confide in one another. Actually listen to your brothers and sisters and stay in the word, man, so you can build one another up. Don't build one another up with vague, false claims. Build one, one another up with the word of God, man. Give each other these laws. Give each other this substance. And stay in contact with your brothers and sisters, man. Let me give one more scripture. Um, I believe it's in Zechariah. 
It might be in Zephaniah, but I ha, the names, man. I gotta get better with the with the precepts, you know. But I'm 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 getting there. Um, remember where it says uh, gather together. Bear with me. Zephaniah, Zephaniah, not Zechariah, man. Uh, I don't know why I'd be thinking that they. Zephaniah 2. Uh, Zephaniah 2 and 5. Oh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. It says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the shaft, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, right? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So if you do these things, the Lord will, his, like in Egypt, how the Lord passed over the houses with the blood on it, it's the same thing. So what did it say to do? Gather yourselves together, ye, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You blacks, so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native Americans, man, get together. This is the perfect time to get together, band together, and understand we are all we have. We do not have nothing else but each other. We never did. People might have fooled you into believing you did. You don't. You, you, you don't. You don't. At the end of the day, you will be left out to dry by all these nations. And they show you that time and time again. So gather together, man. Love each other. Deal with each other justly. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Shalom. Peace to y'all, man. Love y'all.